Hello, everyone. Very nice to see you today as well. So I will start sharing my content. Uh, just um, I think that now you can see everything. Okay, you have a full screen? Probably you have. So, Black Lives Matter movement through modern sports, a doublet knife phenomenon. So, in this presentation, uh, I split it in, in four uh, pieces. First of all, uh, we are gonna, I, I'm gonna say some things uh, about modern sports uh, and introduction. Uh, second, about racism in modern sports. Third, about the Black Lives Matter movement uh, in modern sports and how it is, uh, how we see it through modern sports. And four, about heterotopical spaces in modern sports. So let's begin with, with the appetizer. What are modern sports? A, a brief definition, uh, so as to make sure that everyone uh, has some contact uh, with my presentation show modern sports have five specific characteristics first of all a uh, professionalization second of all commercialization third globalization widespread rules and of course extend bureaucracy actually modern sports have no similarity at all with traditional games or amateur sports like uh, we know them uh, from the ancient years uh, sports clubs, the leagues, federations, uh, all of them work as business companies. So what do they do? They produce spectacle and they sell it. Uh, it's like a big, very big uh, factory, a big business company. Uh, so as you all can understand, money is the first thing in modern sports and money is what rule the whole system of sports. The effect on our daily routine. First of all, sports is, desc is described uh, as a new religion. Uh, according to Frank Defoe, uh, who imported the term sportianity, uh, coming from the term Christianity, she invented the term sportianity uh, because a lot of people were going to, ch to church on Sundays and uh, around 70s and 80s, they started uh, going to the pitch just to watch a game or to play a sport. So uh, in the postmodern uh, times, sports define our lives on a daily basis. Actually, it's a common uh, thing to see ordinary people that want to be like famous athletes, uh, especially kids, especially children, as I work with them uh, like a teacher. I see it every, every day that uh, they want uh, to be like famous athletes, like famous footballers, especially. According to Baudrillard, there is a tempting uh, hyperreality which comes uh, after, the, after these sportsmen and sportswomen. For, for example, uh, they, they have some famous athletes that, uh, especially in the commercials, uh, about selling products. And, uh, and so after all this, you want to be like that uh, footballer, like that uh, sportsman, and uh, be exactly the same in the end of the day. Uh, of course, the, the, we find uses of thousand sports uh, products. Uh, let's start from t-shirts, from uh, the shoes, and uh, some products that are not so necessary, like perfumes. Uh, maybe sometimes you buy a perfume just because a famous athlete uh, wear it. Uh, also, sports uh, have been used uh, so many times from governments and movements in, o in order to... to if we search in history, we will find that uh, 
around the, the Second World War, uh, the Nazi uh, used the, the Olympic Games uh, in Berlin in 1936 so as to establish uh, the, their power. Uh, the same did uh, the Russian Federation in uh, the Winter uh, Olympic Games in, in Sochi. The same happened uh, in Romania in 1976, if I don't mistake, uh, under the uh, under Ceausescu with with Comaneci in Eastern Germany, and so many examples. They they all used sports as a tool so as to show their power to hold the world. So sports, sport is a undoubtedly a social phenomenon. Now, uh, we will say some things about racism in modern sports and uh, how we can see it. Uh, I will start uh, with a bright example in English uh, football. Uh, probably most of you, you are not aware of it. Uh, it's, it's about Paul Canoville, uh, a famous football player in 1982, who was the first black English footballer that played ever for Chelsea FC, this famous football club. And I use this example because uh, at, at, at the end of uh, 70s, uh, early 80s, till uh, late of 80s, it's uh, the postmodernity that starts. So uh, this player faced a lot of monkey chanting, banana throwing, even uh, blade razors, and even by his own teammates. Uh, many times he, he was leaving the pitch two or three hours after the games ended, just for safety reasons. He experienced uh, all this situation for, for about three years. So Paul Canoville, what did he do uh, just some months ago? He, he was against Richard's family in buying Chelsea on March 2022, uh, following uh, Abramovich uh, out of uh, England because of the Russian Ukrainian war. So the Richard's family wanted to buy Chelsea FC, but also the Richard's, fa the Richard's family is a very well known racist who expressed in past uh, that Muslims are enemies. So Paul Canoville was the first who, who became officially uh, against Richard's family. Thank God. Many more contemporary examples. Uh, there are some football players uh, and some athletes. I, I'm going to show them a, a bit later. And uh, actually sports consist a social field where specific actions which may be limited, even banned or censored in different social fields, can take place much easier and uh, in some way much more rationally. Um, let's move. Uh, this is a photo example from uh, uh, our Greek champion in Paul Volt, Karalis, uh, who actually shoot his, his own coach uh, four years ago, if I don't mistake for being racist against the same athlete. Uh, another example is the footballer Zoro, uh, about 18 years ago when he was playing in Messina in Serie A in uh, Italy. Uh, after some match chantings, uh, he just picked up the ball and tried to leave the pitch uh, during the football game. Uh, this is my favorite one, is a, a famous player, Dani Alves. Maybe you have heard of him who was playing for Barcelona. Uh, a banana was thrown uh, when he, uh, he was about to exit a, a corner to, to make a cross. And instead of throwing it back, he picked it up, he ate it, and actually he served a goal to his team after all of this. And this is a Zokora who literally kicks racism out of football. This happened in, in the Turkish Liga. So, Let's go to our main this, uh, how BLM movement uh, seems through modern sports. First of all, uh, we all know that the Black Lives Matter movement is not a new movement, and it's actually formed in USA. Like we said before in a, a yesterday, in, a, in the conversation we had a yesterday, it was formed uh, after the shot of, Tre of Trevor Martin on February 2000, 
12, and after the acquittal of Zimmerman on July 13. Uh, of course, more, more cases of African-American people death uh, followed. Uh, just in brief, some, I will mention some names, Eric Garner, Michael Brown. Uh, what's the point here? That uh, owners uh, of sport clubs uh, they lead the, the same like NBA, uh, like Premier League, all the big leagues, uh, UEFA, FIFA, uh, corporate sp sponsors like Coca-Cola, Huntington, or even more sponsors and companies resisted or ignored the BLM movement till 2020. Uh, I remind us again that uh, on 25th of May of 2020, George Floyd uh, actually got dead after the police in uh, Minneapolis, if I don't mistake. Actually, after George, George Floyd's death, uh, many clubs and leagues uh, around the world uh, adapted uh, the take a knee or high fists uh, before starting uh, games. This actually is still happening in, in, in the European pitches. And uh, this is another a great example that sports power is quite unlimited and uh, how, how much global sports are in our days, modern sports. Uh, George Floyd and Jacob Blake. So George Floyd said that uh, brought in global light the BLM movement. Like I said yesterday, maybe the first serious incident that put on hold the COVID panic. Uh, as I guess, maybe the perfect timing. I don't know, but uh, probably the perfect timing. Uh, however, uh, we had uh, to reach Sunday, 23rd August, 2000. 20, uh, the day that Jacob Blake got shot seven times at back and got paralyzed from waist down. Uh, when, uh, while at the same time, his three kids were, uh, were waiting him in the car and watched the whole scene. It was the, the same day that uh, players of uh, NBA team Milwaukee Bucks decided to boycott the playoffs, the NBA playoffs against Orlando Magic. Uh, it was an unprecedented uh, decision. It was the first time that something like this happened. It was not uh, an order from uh, the official league, but, but it was just something that the players of a team decided. And they decided, and not only they decided, but they did it. The system caught us sleeping, or uh, in other words, in other terms, sports showed one more time its power. What followed after? Let's see what followed after this uh, decision of, of the Bucks players. Uh, there has been no action, so our focus today cannot be on basketball. This is uh, what the uh, what Bucks players stated. Before I'm an athlete, I'm a black woman. This is what Naomi Osaka, the famous tennis champion, stated. We are the ones getting shot. Uh, this is what Doc Rivers stated, uh, LA Clippers manager uh, uh, then. Now he's in Philadelphia. Uh, actually, it made immediate impact across professional sports in USA. And after uh, Buck's statement and their action, the whole NBA, the WNBA, MLS, MLB, and the whole American tennis canceled or postponed immediately the whole games, all games for, for that week. So uh, what happened? Were they touched? Maybe, I don't know. Were they afraid of social reactions? Were they afraid of social image? Or just sports? The power of sports is so big and so expanded that uh, they cannot go against it. Collect it was a collective decision uh, that uh, put on hold of the whole athletic labor and they actually sent a strong message to multiple audiences, not only to sport and fans, but also to politics. And of course, there were greater demands for societal change, equality and racial justice. Uh, after the BLM movement, uh, we are reaching uh, our fourth and last uh, sector of this presentation. Uh, we are going to speak a bit uh, about the intratopical spaces in modern sports. Actually, what happens in the same sport, maybe what, what can happen in the same sport, and uh, that there are different worlds inside the same sport. 
I am going to argue with a, two different examples, but two very characteristic examples. Uh, some of you may be aware of this, uh, <laughs> but probably the most you will not be aware. Uh, so actually, it's about uh, two football clubs, not so famous football clubs. The first is about uh, FC St. Pauli, the German club, and the second is about FC Milgold, an English club, an English football club. So let's start with the German, with the FC St. Pauli. Uh, it's a very special football club. First of all, they, they play in the second uh, division of the, of the German uh, Liga. Uh, maybe the best example of, of the diversity that can be shown in the sports world. It's a club that's famous not for championships, not for quality football or for anything that uh, is correlated with sports. Uh, it's a club that is uh, actually very, very famous for its uh, activist movement, for the social movement. Uh, there are so many social actors uh, taking action uh, inside this club and uh, so, so, uh, so many, so, so much actually, excuse me, uh, social activity. The, let's move to the second example. So in the same sport, talking about football, uh, we have the other side of the coin. It's uh, FC Millwall, an English club. Uh, they also play in the second division of, of English. It's not a very famous uh, football club, but uh, there is a, a football club that represents the uh, masculinity, chauvinism, and racism. Uh, Millwall FC is the best example of such a club. This club is famous uh, for its fearless fans, for hooliganism and uh, vandalism. Actually, uh, it, it has a lot of fans uh, from all over the world. And, the, and uh, Millwall fans enjoy being masculine and bring trouble. Actually, like Tom Gale states, uh, Tom Gale is the Millwall fans official website administrator. Uh, he said that we are the biggest small club in the world. And uh, what we can uh, see in Pandorama BBC documentary 1977, it's that the fame for this club, for Mirval FC, comes not from the club itself, but from its notorious fans. So what do we have here? We have two football clubs, one in Germany and the other in England. They, they play in lower divisions but they represent two different worlds. Uh, the first one, a world of, of activism uh, and friendship. And the second one, a, a world of masculinity, chauvinism and uh, hooliganism and racism. Uh, I would like to have a brief look uh, at what happened on Saturday 5th, December 2020. It was a, a match again between Milwaukee and Derby County in English Championship. It was actually the first game that fans were allowed to pitch after the COVID lockdowns. So what happened there? Uh, we speak about 5th December 2020. So it's just um, some months after uh, George Floyd's death. And uh, all sports leagues uh, have adapted the take and uh, take any move or the high fees. So the, the same did the whole player, uh, all the players, uh, both of Millwall and Derby County. But Millwall fans, uh, I remind us again, it was the first game after the COVID pandemic that fans were allowed to the pitch. And Millwall fans booed all the players of both teams for taking a knee for the BLM movement before start of a game. The same time, actually, uh, the FA, Premier League, the EFL, they kicked it out. Uh, they all are, are uh, federations in, the, in England, sports federations. They support uh, officially uh, the campaign Rainbow Laces under the motto, football has the power to bring us together, standing for LGBT movement. They face supports all players and staff that wish to take a stand against discrimination in a respectful manner, which includes taking off the knee and strongly condemns the behaviors of any spectators that actively voice 
their opposition to such activities. This was the official FA statement. We wish to make clear that taking the knee for us is in no way representative of any agreement with political messaging or ideology. It is purely about tackling discrimination as has been the case throughout. This was the official statement of the Millwall footballers. So the Millwall footballers uh, studied the, the reaction for taking the name. But what happened in the next match, it was really funny be, because the next match, it was QPR uh, versus Millwall. And players of Millwall did not take the knee, but just stood arm in arm with an inequality banner. So I don't know what happened, but probably they started in, in a, some way listening to their fans, to their base. On August uh, 2021, Millwall fans put once again players for taking a knee for BLM. And uh, that day, the, their manager, uh, Gary Rowett, Millwall manager, stated that football has to find a better way to unify people. So what uh, do we see here? We have a fan supporter base, which actually is the community base of uh, European clubs. And actually it represents a socio-cultural capital. This uh, socio-cultural capital is the source of power, money, legality of a European sport club in football, in basketball, in any terms. Uh, in, 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 in any sport in Europe. So actually, we see that people define a club. So this is a, why the footballers and all of the athletes had in a, some, some, somehow to listen to their uh, fans, to their supporters, because their supporters are the source of power, money, or legality. It's completely different rather than it is in the US and in the rest of the world. This is an example of the locker room. So in St. Pauli, this uh, actually are the official locker rooms of uh, FC St. Pauli. This is a banner of St. Pauli supporters. You can see about refugees, a refugees welcome. The, there are fans that uh, actually uh, about 80-90% of them, they, they are uh, active activists. Uh, this is FC Millwall footballers who stood arm in arm uh, just a week after the incident with their fans. And this actually is a, an image from Millwall supporters. Uh, you can see a banner that no one likes us. And about you can see actually what color misses from the image, uh, from the picture. You can see only white men, not women, no African-American, no, nothing, only white men. And in brief, in conclusion, so BLM movement originated from USA and spread globally and actually expanded really rapidly after George Floyd's death. It's a postmodern social phenomenon uh, which uh, add voices for racial and social equality and actually closely correlating against any type of discrimination. Uh, even this is racial, gender, nation, which uh, we saw previously that uh, it really correlates with LGBT movement, for example, or with feminist movements. Modern sports are also a postmodern social phenomenon, which is widespread all over the world. And their power is undeniable. Uh, actually, I would like you to ask yourselves if you can find another social field uh, that has such great power in uh, our contemporary uh, lives. Uh, I was thinking, uh, I don't know, for how much time and I cannot think of another social uh, field that it, its power is so obvious in our daily routine. Uh, so it's a field that uh, sports are a field where actions or movements can grow and uh, flourish uh, with an effect on our daily life. Athletes, clubs, leagues, sponsors, even fans themselves take advantage of modern sports power and effect. A BLM movement a trend becomes a tool for various social actors. 
this is what uh, uh, sports, modern sports taught us. And actually the billion movement is used either as a way of expressing equality messages or as a way of political engagement. Uh, and this is a point that maybe we should, we should remain for a little time uh, because we see that uh, contemporary politics uh, engages uh, more and more with modern sports. For example, we, we have some uh, uh, so, uh, social researches that speak ab about the footballization of politics and how the politicians use uh, terms from football and from sports so as to express themselves and what to, and what they they, they want to say to to people just to make it clearer. Uh, I think I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention. And hopefully we can discuss uh, after the panelists. And thank you very much.